When it comes to protein, most people with kidney disease are told the same thing. Don't eat too much, watch your protein intake, or the famous limit to three ounces per day. But what does that actually mean? How much is too much? How do you know if you're eating enough or the right kinds of protein? And here's the thing, protein needs aren't a one size fits all and portions can be really confusing. A serving of chicken, beans, tofu, or nuts all looks different and they all give you different amounts of protein. So in today's video, I'm breaking down how to understand protein portions what those numbers um, actually mean, and how to compare animal and plant sources, and how to make sure your plate matches your kidney needs. And if you want a step-by-step -step plan to get this right for your kidneys, I'll share how you can join my kidney-friendly protein plan program waitlist at the end of this video. So the generic advice given around protein and protein portions like eat three ounces per day or three ounces per meal is confusing. Where does this recommendation even come from? The three ounce recommendation, again, is usually for animal protein. And this is often just given vaguely because people typically eat larger amounts than a three ounce portion. So if your provider is saying, oh, limit to three ounces, it's really just to try to make sure that you aren't overdoing the protein, especially animal protein. A typical size hamburger patty is four to six ounces, which is 28 to 42 grams of protein. Then your bun, your cheese, any other sides like bacon, that can all add protein to the meal. When we think of fish, chicken, steak at a restaurant, that serving can be four to eight ounce portion. And again, this is going to be a lot more than what someone with kidney disease actually needs. And if we even give an example of the Cheesecake Factory, I'm not calling them out by any means, but they provide their nutrition info online. So it's really easy to look up. But their steak tacos, for example, are 60 seven grams of protein. Their grilled salmon is 62 grams of protein and their chicken enchiladas are 65 grams of protein. This could be someone with kidney disease, entire daily protein needs just in one meal. And so that is why we're diving into protein portions and what you need to know as someone with kidney disease. So let's break down how to actually measure your protein intake. So first of all, what foods are going to count as your protein? When we think of plant protein, your legumes, so beans and lentils, your soy products, soybeans, tofu, tempeh, and edamame, your nuts and seeds, your whole grains, and then others like seitan or vital wheat protein will be your plant protein foods. Animal protein is going to be beef, pork, lamb, chicken, turkey, fish and seafood, eggs, and dairy like milk and cheese and yogurt. I want to throw in a little caveat about fruits and veggies because oftentimes people get over focused on protein when it comes to kidney disease and then they worry about fruits and veggies. So your fruits and veggies are going to only provide like one to three grams of protein for a serving. Yes, there are some slightly higher protein vegetables like green peas or corn, but it's still going to be a very small amount compared to the other plant protein options. So don't stress over continuing or counting the grams of protein from your fruits and veggies. It's very, very beneficial for you to be adding these foods to your protein sources because they add fiber, phytonutrients, and they are alkaline producing, which is very beneficial for your kidneys. So let's talk about standard protein portions, starting with our plant protein. So legumes, a half a cup of cooked is one serving, and that could be about six to 10 grams of protein. Your whole grain, one cup cooked is one serving, and that's five to 10 grams of protein. Your nuts and seeds can be anywhere from two tablespoons to a quarter cup is one serving, and that could be two to seven grams of protein. And then soy, a cup of soy milk, a half, half a cup of edamame, or three ounces of tofu, which is about half a cup, is one serving, and that can range anywhere from eight to 17 grams of protein. And then seitan is a, um, a little bit higher in protein. Three ounces is about 18 grams of protein. For animal protein, so one ounce of uncooked meat is about seven grams of protein. One ounce of uncooked fish or seafood is about seven grams of protein. One egg, which is about one ounce, is about seven grams of protein. One ounce of cheese is about seven grams of protein. And then milk and yogurt, um, a serving size standard is about one cup of milk or three quarter cup of yogurt. And that's anywhere from seven to 15 grams of protein, depending on if it is like a Greek yogurt that's higher in protein. So as you can see, animal and plant proteins provide varying 
grams of protein. Some foods we measure in weight, like animal protein and cheese and sometimes tofu, and other foods we would measure with measuring cups. All foods can be eyeballed if you don't have a food scale or you don't have a measuring cup. If you are going to do eyeball portion sizes, this is what we are looking at. One baseball size you can use to measure about one cup of a cooked grain or pasta. The computer mouse or a deck of cards would be roughly three ounces. So that can be really helpful to measure your meat, fish, and seafood. A tennis ball would be about a half a cup. So if you were measuring your cooked tofu, your legumes, or your tempeh. A golf ball would be about a quarter of a cup, so you can eyeball measure some of like your nuts or seeds, or a ping pong ball would be about two tablespoon portion, so that could be used to measure your nuts and nut butters. And additionally, for cheese, three dice stacked up is about the size of one ounce of cheese, or a quarter cup of shredded cheese is roughly one ounce. So just a reminder, again, if you are at home and you have a scale to measure your animal protein or you have measuring cups to measure your plant proteins, that is going to be the most accurate, but you can use these eyeball portion sizes if you don't have that or for don't want to be measuring for every single meal. The main takeaway is that the um, different protein sources when measured are going to provide different amount of grams of protein and the grams of protein per meal and per day is what you want to know as someone with kidney disease because your total protein needs need to be met with these different foods. Don't worry about the fruits and veggies. We want plenty of those on our plate. It's just worried about more of the measuring the animal and plant sources. Protein is obviously just one part of your plate. It is just as important what you pair your protein with um, and getting plenty of those fruits and vegetables. And to give a little example, like foods all add up when we combine them. We typically aren't and don't want to be eating just protein on its own and alone, we eat a combination of food. So the protein will add up for the total meal based on what else is on your plate. And you would need to track that a whole entire meal in a food app like chronometer or chronometer.com to know the exact estimate of total protein. But let's give a quick example. So let's say you have a half a cup of dry oats that you cook with one cup of soy milk. So the dry oats are about five and a half grams of protein. The one cup of soy milk, seven grams of protein. You add a quarter cup of nuts, about four grams of protein on top, and one cup of blueberries. The blueberries really only be about one gram of protein. So overall, this whole meal is 17 and a half grams of protein. The main thing really is just recognizing when you're putting that meal together that you're getting protein from your whole grain, from your soy, and from your nuts, and then don't really have to worry about about that fruit. So remember, it really comes down to the balancing of animal and plant proteins for kidney health. Can you swap out one meal that would normally have chicken for tofu? Or can you do a combination of beans and a smaller amount of chicken? That way you get less animal protein and you get more of the fiber and plant protein benefit from the beans. Or can you use, um, let's say you're having eggs, can you add a lot of vegetables to that meal because those aren't going to be super high in protein and they help to make the meal less acid forming. There's lots of options and ways that you can you know, plan your plate and plan your meal so that it's more kidney protective. The right amount of protein really isn't about guessing or using just one generic rule. It's about learning what's right for you and your kidneys. And if you want to take the guesswork out of protein, how much, what type, what to pair it with for better kidney function, you can join the wait list for my kidney friendly protein plan program. This is a group program where you get step-by-step -step guidance from me on how to eat to protect your kidney health. And by being on the wait list, you get first access, first information, when enrollment opens and a special discount as well. So you can get all of that info in the caption of this video. I'm Michelle Krosmer. I'm a renal dietitian. Thank you for watching this. I hope it was helpful for you. If you can like and share the video and make sure to subscribe to eat for your kidneys and I will see you guys next time.